This guy, Mark Rowley, got asked this question, and it's about Elon Musk. Well, it's, it's not really. They're going to couch it in Elon Musk because Elon Musk is the new bad guy. And you know what it is with the left. It's the new two minutes hate, hate this guy, hate that guy. Who was the last guy? Oh, it was Alex Jones. They don't hate Alex Jones anymore because they're close to, well, hopefully not, but God willing, not taking a billion dollars from Alex Jones. So we can stop hating Alex Jones. And who was it they hated prior to that? Oh, they hated Rush Limbaugh for about three decades before the Lord took him home, after Rush shared his testimony in Jesus, by the way, for almost an entire show, praise God. So cool. So who was it prior to that? Well, it doesn't matter because it's always going to be someone. But the cycle rate these days with the left and the two minutes hate has gotten faster. Elon Musk is that guy now because Elon Musk, of course, is committing the terrible, terrible act of a thought crime virtuous thought crime, you know, free thinking. Elon Musk is nothing like a radical right winger. Elon Musk is a probably radical, boring thinker. Radical, well, not boring in terms of tech, but radically boring in terms of his policies. Simple things like tax rates he wants to talk about, safe borders, secure cities, and of course, preventing kids from being chemically and surgically mutilated. These are not hardcore right wing positions at all. So when asked about this, this police commissioner didn't say, are you kidding me? I'm not going to extra that Elon Musk. I wouldn't have that authority. He said something else. I want you to hear that in a second because it speaks to a level of corruption and desperation that's really, really hard to recognize unless you step back and realize it's not just strength. This isn't projecting strength. It's not projecting power. It's projecting a deep fear that like these people, like this woman you're about to hear from, who watched President Trump talk with Elon Musk, might say something human. People like Mark Rowley know that when people say something human, his job is threatened because his job in the UK is to protect certain groups of people over others. In this case, the newcomers are over longtime citizens of the UK. There's so much corruption. Make sure that that corruption is not touching your retirement accounts. I don't care how young or old you are, Corruption can destroy your ability to build wealth. It can do it through inflation. It can do it through corrupt deal making. Here's what you can do. Get a free, no obligation consultation with my friend and brother, Zach Abraham, who will look at all your investments. He'll look at your home if you have one. He'll look at your non-home if you intend to buy one. He'll look at your plan for retirement. Zach defines a successful retirement as this, knowing exactly how much money you'll have every single month. He does this through a radical, obsessive focus on risk management, which can reduce risk and volatility. And the way Zach does this is he actively manages every single portfolio, which of course can reduce risk and volatility. So easy. Just go to knowyourriskradio.com, ask for a free, no obligation consultation. You, your spouse, or just you on a video call, or you can meet with him in his office in Seattle or near Seattle. It's knowyourriskradio.com is the website. The phone number is 866-779-RISK. Bulwark Capital Management is an investment advisor representative of Trek Financial LLC, an SEC registered investment advisor. Investments involve risk. You could lose money. Past performance doesn't guarantee future results. Trek 24-244, knowyourriskradio.com. So asked about Elon Musk, that's how they couched the question. Would you think of enforcing this against Elon Musk, a U.S. citizen, which would involve extradition? Here's the police commissioner, Mark Rowley. We will throw the full force of the law at people. And whether you're in this country committing crimes on the streets or committing crimes from further afield online, we will come after you. Talk to me about that, because we have seen some high-profile figures whipping up the hatred you talked about it in there with the officers in fact about this being added to by online commentary i mean i'm even thinking of the likes of elon musk getting involved what are you considering when it comes to dealing with people who are whipping up this kind of behavior from behind a keyboard maybe in a different country being a keyboard warrior does not make you safe from the law you can be guilty of offenses of of incitement of stirring up racial hatred there are numerous terrorist offences regarding um, uh, uh, the sort of publishing of material. All of those offences are in play if people are provoking hatred and violence on the streets. And we will come after those individuals just as we will physically confront on the streets the thugs and the obs who are, taking, who are causing the problems for communities. Problems for communities, but not during the Black Lives Matter and corporate riots. Those are good riots. 
those are good and virtuous overturning of police cars. Those are good and virtuous threats. When the newcomers in the UK marched demanding death to Jews, those were good and virtuous death threats from good and virtuous people who are vital to the survival of the UK. In fact, they built the UK. Not everyone who has been flooded into these countries with the purposeful, absolutely brutal, full force effort to change these countries completely by changing the voting blocks completely to make sure that there can be no actual unanimity around issues that matter to longtime UK citizens. Not all those people are violent thugs. But many, of course, are becoming violent thugs. Those who weren't already violent thugs are being shown, hey, you get to do this here. Mark Rowley is a clever enough man to understand his job hangs in the balance. His job is to protect the newcomers. But he would actually think that he's going to enforce this against United States citizens. I would beg you, Mark Rowley. I don't have Elon Musk's uh, visibility or anything like it, but I would beg you, extradite me. It'd be great for the podcast. It'd be great for business. And it would be a fascinating thing for me to look you in the eye and say, I'm not going to lie. I'm going to stand on my faith. I'm not going to lie. These people do not have the confidence you might think. These are not the moves of strong people. These are the moves of fearful people. They're afraid of women like this. Hi, I had to come on here today uh, to talk about the interview that Elon Musk had with uh, President Donald Trump last night. When I got on X this morning, I saw all of these negative um, headlines from our media about how bad the interview was. Now, if you didn't listen to the interview, you would think that Donald Trump said he was going to do something to everybody in the world. Let me tell you what it was. I sat there and I normally don't listen to speeches or interviews, but I sat there and I listened to the entire thing. And it was really quite amazing. And I would implore any politician to say the same thing. If you want people to vote for you, then you need to address issues that are important to people. And so instead Instead of the Democrat Party constantly bashing Donald Trump, you know what they need to do? This is what I say to them. You say the same things. You address the same issues. You address inflation. You address, address the war. You address uh, freedom of speech that you guys are trying so hard to remove from everyone. When you address those same issues, or if you address those same issues, then your party platform would be about issues and not about Donald Trump. It is the weirdest thing to me. And then people fall for it. I, I, when I was reading the comments, I was like, I just listened to this whole thing and I couldn't believe I did, but I did. I said, but you know why I listened to the whole thing? Because he talked about things that were important to Americans. Democrats, start talking about things that are important to Americans and stop pandering. Stop saying you're going to give away something for free and then address why you're giving everything to illegal immigrants. Talk about this illegal immigration. It's what I call the black replacement plan. And now I know everybody's like they're replacing everybody. Yeah, that's true. But I'm going to tell you why it's so important to us. We're now only a little between 13 and 14 percent of the population. They say they brought in 20 million illegal Im immigrants. That's one of the uh, numbers that I've heard. And, you know, it's not confirmed. One of the numbers that I've heard, because, of course, they're not going to tell us how many for real. And they probably and they have no idea themselves. But when that happens, we're only uh, over 40 Millions. So just think, they brought in adults and mostly adult men that are half of our population. Do you think that will not affect what they're going to do in our communities? Do you think that won't affect what's going to happen with schools in predominantly black communities, Hispanic communities? Do you think that will not affect us? Uh, so I say to you, uh, instead of you jumping on and being the party of intimidation, being the party of constant, constant hatred, why don't you start addressing issues just like Trump did? And one of the things that he said that I thought was so important is Elon said something about the CO2 levels in the world right now. And I was so glad because, you know, that climate change thing, that's another one of the firm's things. Uh, Donald Trump says, no, the most important thing that we're facing right now is nuclear, the nuclear capacity of countries all over the world. 
Nuclear capacity that's been boosted, of course, by figurehead Biden and prior to him, Barack Hussein Obama, God bless Rush Limbaugh, who came up with that nickname for him. She scares people like Mark Rowley. You cannot make that lovely woman into a terrorist. You obviously, since she is black, cannot make her into a white supremacist. Though they try. After all, the Southern Poverty Law Center said that Dr. Ben Carson was a white supremacist. But to reasonable people, people whose hearts have not been stolen by the enemy, you can't make her a terrorist. And yet, if she was speaking about the UK and not America, Mark Rowley, because the UK is nearly a completely fallen country, he thinks he could enact speech laws to go grab her. Try it, Mark. Try extraditing Americans for speaking their opinion. I dare you.